What would motivate someone who holds a master's degree, is a licensed paramedic, and speaks five languages to step into the ring with some of the world's best fighters? A passion and a dream. A passion for competing and the dream of representing your ancestral homeland at the biggest athletic show on earth, the Olympics. Walter Sarnoy Opatana has come a long way from fighting on the mean streets of East LA. He's earned a WBC title and even ran for city council. But his greatest honor is representing his Lao heritage on the global stage. Walter's passion has taken him on a trip around the world where he has felt the thrill of victory and the agony defeat, but still finds time to help others as a first responder. His ultimate destination, the 2024 Paris Olympics. You look cool, dude. So you're down in Florida, huh? Ready for the hurricane? Yeah, yeah. Thursday, so we'll see how how um, how how serious it's gonna get. But they anticipate a level one category hurricane, and it's gonna be blowing at sixty miles an hour. So we'll see. Okay, so man. Where, where where are you at? Miami? That Miami area? No, um, it's I'm in um, I'm in, in between Tampa and Orlando. Okay. Oh, more inland. Yeah, more inland. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Well, yeah, well, hopefully everybody stays safe, man, and they're in good hands with Walter down there on the scene. <laughs> so. Yeah, I just can't wait to get out and just um, get back to training camp, man. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, we're excited to have you on, man. Co's going to go ahead and kick off the show, and then we'll roll into the interview. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of C4 Podcast, Southeast Asian Athlete Achievement Through Adversity, where we focus on, on not only the achievement, but mostly the adversity that the athletes go through. So basically, they're telling their story. You know, everybody thinks that success at, at the high level, it's, it's almost like it comes naturally. And, and while it does for some athletes, some are just naturally gifted. There are others that, you know, have to put in the work and over time, you know, they experience a lot of roadblocks on, along the way. And like even myself, you know, you, you uh, get these roadblocks, but you somehow find a way to get through them. So we have an amazing guest today. Uh, if you haven't already, please like, comment, please like and share our page, C4 Podcast, Law American Sports. We're both on IG and FB. And without further ado, I'm going to introduce my co-host, John Messina, and he'll take over from here. Yeah, thanks, Co. Walter, we are excited to have you on. Um, you know, when Co came up with the, the idea for the podcast and the name Southeast Asian Athlete Achievement Through Adversity, you've got all those things in your background. <laughs> so oh, you're, okay. Thank you. yeah, you're exactly what we had in mind when we wanted to do this, just to tell these incredible stories, to inspire others and, and let them know what, what some folks have went through to get where, they, where they're at. Um, and that it didn't just come easy and you got to keep pushing and work at it. So you, you had kind of a, let's call it an interesting childhood from what I understand. Um, so kind of tell us about your upbringing there in LA. Well, I grew up in LA and then, uh, you know, a lot of times my mother couldn't take care, couldn't take care of me. I grew up in a single house, a single parent household. My dad left when I was a little kid and then my mom, she was working and to provide for the family, she had to work full time. And she sent me with his family from Mexico. And they they took care of me till when I was a baby till, till my teenage years. And that was a time where I, I understood and I, and I learned the culture of the Mexican culture. But at the time when I spent it with my mom, I learned the Asian culture. And when I was with my mom's circle of friends and group, I learned to, just, to keep the language. And, um, and, uh, and eventually I met my dad later on when I was in my teens. I'll tell you what later we got into a fist fight when I was in my because I you know I was I was a juvenile young kid. I didn't have a I didn't have any father figure growing up. So uh, you know, when you see your your biological father and he barely comes back into your life and and how how it was at that time, you know, I didn't I didn't have any man as a role model at that time. So I only had my friends and the streets as a role model. And when I see a guy that claims he's my father. And yeah, that's what happened. I got I got into a fight, but we ended up making up. As I got older, I understood. And now to this day, I still talk to my father, who's in Thailand. 
That's good. That's good. So real quick, you you were born in the States, right? Yeah, I was born in L.A., Monterey Park. Oh, OK. Yeah. OK. Yeah, that's right, right next to Whittier, right? Yeah. Alhambra, San Gabriel, San Gabriel Valley. It's east okay, of L.A. Yeah, yeah. It's kind yeah, of east of L.A. Yeah, yeah. in the San Gabriel okay. Valley. Yes. Um, yeah, good food out there. Yeah, uh, good Monterey Chinese Park. food. That's right, man. Well, that's kind of cool. So, yeah. So with that, you grew up kind of in a multilingual environment. And, and that's yeah. usually two languages for most people. But you you pretty much speak three languages or more fluently, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, that's that's kind of cool. So, well, so, what language, did, so what language do you speak? So, I speak Spanish, La Thai, and Lao. And English, of course, right? Yeah. So why? It's four. <laughs> yes. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And, and I think a little bit of Mandarin, right? A little bit? Yeah, yeah, I do. I do. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome, man. Well, how did you then? So you're, you know, you're, you're, you're kind of growing up on the streets there. Um, how did you end up getting into boxing? Well, I uh, was picked on by by Mexicans growing up. You know, I faced the racial thing. You know, growing up Asian in a Mexican neighborhood. You know, they'll call me, you know, Chino. That's what they would call Asian kids at that time. The nickname probably still do with the kids that get bullied or something, or even a nickname, but. Um, they would call me Chino and make fun of me, Ching, you know, call me names. And, uh, and to a certain point, there's only so much you can take. It. And I had to defend myself. But at that time, I, you know, you just learn to fight in the streets to learn. But I didn't know the proper, how to properly fight. And, and eventually the people were bigger and I couldn't defend myself to a certain point anymore. And eventually that's when I got into boxing when, I got jumped by a group of Mexican gangsters, some cholos, and I came home one day. My mom saw me and beat up, and she said, uh, man, uh, and I want to know how to box. She thought it was too dangerous for me. So I met some friends at that time, and and they told me to go to the gym in East L.A., and and um, that's how you're going to get better. And that's what I would do after, after school or from home. I would take the bus every day to go to the gym to box from a recreational boxing gym in East LA, Eddie Heredia boxing club. It's on Atlantic and Olympic and East LA. And it's still there. And that, uh, that area, you know, where it has lower income kids, you know, I got to learn, survive, even understand the lifestyle there. Yeah. That's kind of Downey, right? Old. Downey. Area. Yeah, that's East, East LA. Okay. How, how old were you here? This, when this, well, when, 13, when you, 13, 13, oh, 13. Okay. Yeah. Now, did you have an issue like with with the Asian kids? You know, like I know, like like the, 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 because you grew up like with with a uh, Mexican family, right? Did the, the, the yeah, Asian yeah. Kids, so I had some Asian kids. Yeah. <laughs> so it's crazy, right? So I had some Asian friends like here and there, but most of my friends were either Mexican or some other color, pretty much. Yeah. I didn't start having Asian friends until I started becoming like eighteen, nineteen. That's when I first started oh, having wow. Asian okay. friends. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, good. Well, you got into that gym, Walter, and some good things started happening, right? Yes. Um, tell us about some of those early accomplishments and what well, you got with the boxing. I got my 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 ass beat for my butt beat for a uh, for a first year. I'll get beat up, you know. That's how you learn, and um, eventually you start getting better. You start learning from the from the from the beat downs you take. It's either you sink or swim, and uh, that's how it was for me. And you learn. And eventually, I started getting good. I started competing little by little. started winning. And eventually, going to state competitions, winning. And then eventually, I got good and started becoming. And that was just my – I was obsessed with uh, just being better than how I was the day before. And, um, you know, it took me places traveling for 13, 14, 15 years old. I was traveling already, going to different states. And, and then and, and some of the best experiences is, you know, traveling and going on a plane and, seeing things I would never get to see and still traveling to this day as a 36 year old male traveling for competition. I can't complain. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. I mean, from, from, from the sea games, you were like, you were like, I just, I saw like your post, like you were all over there for a while. Huh? You were like, yeah, oh, yeah, God. yeah. I had an unfortunate uh, turn uh, result, which I thought I won from my competition, but um, Hey, um, I'm, next sea games and next olympic qualifiers it's a different story T tell me about that because i've experienced it myself as, as a bodybuilder right mm -hmm. it, it's subjective but 
but in, in boxing, you would think like, okay, let's let's say me as a bodybuilder. Yeah. You would think common sense. This guy looks better than this guy, right? Like even yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Back in the day, like my mom used to go and she she'd always pick the winner. And, yeah. and boxing is the same. Like if you like if you hit somebody, you knock them down, or you look like you're you're beat. Most most everyone knows, right? But it always yes, comes yes, down yes. to the judges, right? Yeah. Like t- tell us exactly, you know, like how you were feeling at that moment when when you heard that decision, because you because you felt I was, like you I was right. I was mad, and you could see it after five to the fight. I I got pissed, you know, after the decision. Like what the hell, man? Yeah. And you know, I lose for a country, and now I have a lot of weight on my shoulders, and I'm 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 effing disappointed, you know. Mm-hmm. And, um, I'm sad, you know. I'm crying. I I still cry, man, after fights because I take it to the heart, you know how much it means to me to win i i hate losing i hate losing yeah 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 i, hate yeah, I hear you man uh, so, but sometimes like i've been told like when i've gotten seconds it's like i mean people would come up to me my friends and family say, like man you got you really like were pissed like you know what i didn't even know because like, it's just it's it's at, it's at the moment right mm-hmm. i mean you're thinking in your heart that you're gonna win and then all of a sudden you, you don't and like these emotions come out and like, I didn't, I was like, I tell them, I don't even remember. You know, I don't remember how like that I acted that way, uh-huh. you know, because it, again, it's, it's so emotional. You expected to win. You, you worked for it. You trained for it. Yeah. And like, you know, and yeah. And in this case you were representing Laos. So that I had a lot, you know, met that meant a lot, you know, and one more one fight away from the medal round, you know, I'm so like, Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, that's tough. Well, tell us, because I mean, you've had your 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 wins and your losses, but you won a WBC title, right? Yes. Um, a, a while back now, of course. But man, tell us about that. What it felt like? Oh, uh, it was a great dream come true. One of my life goals accomp- goals accomplished because one, you had the WBC pre- president having a ceremony in Mexico City for me, and next to George Foreman. You know, I'm getting presented <laughs> by George Foreman. Like, wow, I can't complain. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, that's that's really what, what cool. was what was the weight class for that Walter? Uh featherweight, one twenty six. And how long ago was this? Two thousand eighteen and two thousand nineteen. Oh wow, we won both years. Mm-hmm. Two, 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 two WBC two titles. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's a competitive weight class down there, especially down in Mexico. Yes. A lot of good fighters very, in that weight class, man. Very very strong. So, yeah, great job. But you also boxed in college, right? And you even got a master's degree. I mean, tell yes. us a little bit about that. So at that time, they're not giving the scholarships in the way anymore. The U.S. National Olympic Committee would give scholarships to, like, top 10 ranked athletes in the United States. And they can only pick two per weight class for each weight class. And I was one of the luck- lucky select few to be selected. I was selected by... 1996 Olympic boxing head coach Al Mitchell, he selected me and luck because because I was selected by default because the basically it goes down for one two three four I was number seven or six at that time so number three or four or five didn't accept it so I was next in line so they accepted me. That's yeah, awesome. That, that's yeah. that, that's and really. That's how cool. I was able to finish my bachelor's degree and uh, you know still box at the same time. Yeah, then you picked up a master's degree along the way, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, while fighting professionally and, you know, run in the morning, go to school, and then train after school, you know, that was my everyday thing. Yeah, so, because, I, you know, I did that article on you for the Lao American Sports Hall of Fame, and somebody after asked me who read, they're like, what is this? This guy's got a master's degree. He's a licensed paramedic. He ran for city. What the heck is he doing getting in the ring? I mean, what (laughs) motivates you to keep, keep at this? I love to fight, you know, and, you know, it's within me. That's basically one of the most legal ways you can fight, you know, without getting in legal trouble. Is, is, that, is that how you got the nickname schoolboy? <laughs> yeah, no, I got the schoolboy because when I was in school in Michigan, um, most of the people, my teammates were from the hood, from, from the ghetto, from the hood. Uh-huh. And, um, and when everybody would go out to events, go to parties or – Friday, Saturday, and I'll be stuck in my my dorm room studying, you know, studying for the next for the next week to come, and I wouldn't go out. Oh, eventually, okay. they got. Eventually, they would get me to go out. They corrupted me, but eventually, yes, they did. But, but for the most part, I was studying in my room. Well, you had that balance, right? You got to go out a little bit, but you got to balance <laughs> it, right? That's yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's cool. definitely a balance, man. I mean, 
a master's degree and to be a professional athlete. Like I didn't finish college because I chose to pursue bodybuilding. Right. Mm-hmm. And like that kind of disappointed my parents because, you know, the Laotian parents, like school's yeah. number one, you know, they would have wanted me to go to college, get, you know, get a degree and all that. And I, I never got that, you know, and I don't even think like, even when I turned professional, I still think like in their mind, you know, like they probably would have been prouder if I got my, you know, bachelor's degree, yeah. if I had gotten a degree, you know? So like, but that's cool for you to attain, obtain both. It's, that's, that's quite an accomplishment right there. Man. Yeah. Thank you. I cool. appreciate that, man. I'm very honored that you guys called me to do this. I'm happy. Um, yeah, it's been crazy. I'm, Looking forward to this hurricane coming up, so we'll see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's admirable what you're doing down there as a first responder to help the people. Um, but speaking of honors, I mean, you were selected to represent Laos in international competition. Yes. You've been doing that now for, for a few years since before yes. the um, last Olympics and so yes. forth. But tell us about that and what it means. It's a dream come true because, one, I'm the first person to do it next to Fanny. I'm the first person. American to ever get the Lao passport to have it accepted as dual first to do it and it was a hell of a, a process man I don't I there were so many times I wanted to quit and just want to get the hell out so you know what maybe it's not for me maybe it's not for me but maybe my my girlfriend I, you know and who's from Laos and she's been able to help me with this process and um I can't, I can't complain. She was able to interpret everything for me and help me be in touch with my Lao family to help me yeah. do the paperwork. And, um, and it's a crazy because I'm, thank you, Facebook. One day I hope to meet Mark Zuckerberg because if it wasn't for Facebook, I would have never remember, found my family again. That's awesome. Yeah. Cause yeah. I, I searched for everybody from my mom's last name on Facebook and, um, and I messaged them the same thing and nobody responded except to me, except to one girl. She was like 15, 16, and her parents told her not to respond to it. That of a stalker. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I was like, no, I'm, I believe I'm your family member. So I put them in contact with my mom and their family and their parents, and it finds out that we're related. We start, they start talking about the same relatives, and we are related. So so where okay. is your family from in Laos? Like, what, what uh, part? Ban Vat Chan. Uh, is, that, is that north, middle? Yeah, south? Vientiane, Vientiane. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. That occurred like a, I wouldn't call it a suburb, right? But like one yeah, of those suburb, small towns yeah. in the in the province. Yes. Um, yeah, that's cool, Walter. And yeah, we all we all owe you a big word of thanks because you kind of paved the way for future international athletes of Lao descent to come back. Yeah. Um, you know, it's we we've had a great time talking about it through the process because some folks who are listening may know, some may not. But my daughter, who's a swimmer, has also been selected to represent Laos. So Walter that's and I will be. That's hanging honor. out at the sea games and yeah so you did a lot of leg work it's a new law that they passed a few years ago yeah walter was like one of the first people to kind of go through the process so it's gotten a little let's call it smoother but yeah one of the things you need to do is they need to verify your ancestry and it's not like the u.s right where everything's well documented and so we we actually had to you know you had to get family members over there to vouch for you and find this book and it's like this whole that's a whole part of the process um, so we went through it too. We've been approved, everything's set and it's going to be an exciting sea games in Cambodia. Cause we're going to have Walter there. We're going to have four swimmers from the U S of Lao heritage, my daughter, including one of them. And I think a couple other international athletes. So, so sea games is annually John? every, every two, two years. years. Every the only reason years. it was okay. last year is the pandemic delayed it. So, so uh, now it's okay. back to back, but it's not, that's unusual. It's supposed okay. to be every okay. other year. And the SEA Games is for people of Laos is important because it's a, an event for most sports where you're allowed to qualify for the Olympics. Um, so it's a kind of an important, important event from that regards. So, so, so now, so the 20, 2023 is going to be, it is the, the right year. So it's going to be next, it's 2025, right? Yep. So it's yeah. 2023. Yeah, we're okay. going to be at 2023, all of us. That'll be, a, that'll be cool. Yeah. Um, hopefully get get some medals for Laos and, and a few different sports and yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be but really cool man back in the day back in the 90s I believe bodybuilding was in the sea games because I remember talking to somebody about trying to get dual citizenship so I could compete um, of course that never happened but I don't, I don't think it's around anymore but but back in the 80s and 90s bodybuilding was uh 
was more popular and 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 they wanted like olympic uh acceptance and the sea game and the world games they went to the world games but never made it to the olympics so not yet not yet yeah so just one more thing that i found interesting about you walter you actually ran for city council in monterey park your hometown i did man. that was crazy <laughs> you doing it all man doing great. it all doing so it what's all. I know you got got several more years of boxing ahead of you, but long term, man, what what's what's life got ahead for you? You know, after this, I want to um, get into the management of athletes. I don't want to be a trainer. No, and that's there's so much patience in dealing with the head cases. You know, yeah, yeah. Athletes, athletes like myself, or even other athletes. Uh, but I would like to manage, maybe promote, but manage other athletes and guiding them in their careers. But some way somehow be involved in the sport you know and developing helping um at risk youth or underprivileged that they have the same opportunity and just you know share my story with them you know because you know you know boxing is not forever but um you know, how you stay involved in, in all aspects of the sport is what, what matters you know giving back for me yeah that, that, that's a that's a great way i mean i i mean me i'm done i'm retired so right so it's like I do where I'm coaching people. Yeah, you're still fit, though. You're still fit. <laughs> well, I can't – like, not in competitive mode, right? I mean, not, I, I don't want to – I mean, ever – I don't feel like I want to compete again. I'm, I'm just trying to stay healthy, right? But uh, but giving back, man, I'd love to do that. Mm. I'd love to do something, like, since you guys are going back to Laos, maybe, you know, find out for me, like, you know, what 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 is going on with bodybuilding because I'd love okay. to – I'd love to help the people. I know they have a bodybuilding team. They just had like a bodybuilding, yep. like a Mr. Laos contest. I'd love to be okay. involved with them. But it's always yeah. like it's always about giving back, right? Most it's definitely. Always, yeah. Yeah. We'll try to connect with the the fed that federation. There's different federations for every sport. So yeah. Well, cool. Well, Walter, man, you've accomplished a lot, man. You fought through a real adversity. Um, what advice do you have for others out there either facing this kind of adversity or or chasing some dream like you are? You know, life is going to throw so many obstacles at you, different kinds. You know, I was going through so much in my life. Not, it was, not only was it just um, the politics of the sport, but also girl problems. Man, girl problems will mess you up, too. Just relationship <laughs> problems, man. Dude, that'll mess you up. But I overcame that obstacle, and I would love to speak to guy or girl and anything – don't ever let that get in the way of what you're what you're trying to do, ever. Because some people will put their relationship before the their passion of the sport. I've, I've been guilty of that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Terrible. And um, that will destroy it. That will yeah. that will destroy the dream. And, yeah. And um, yeah, I've learned a lot. And luckily, I was able to escape on time. So I made. I was at, <laughs> I was able to come out and rise above <laughs> the occasion. <laughs> I mean, I, I kind of went through the same thing a few years ago, and it's probably the best thing that ever happened, right? Because it, it forced me to really take a look at my life. Yeah. And, and I just I almost gave up everything. So. <clears throat> oh, man. Yeah, man. But you're right. You're right. It's not just females. It's it's, it's female athletes that deal with male counterparts, and it's yeah. male athletes that deal with females. So it could go either way. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, haven't, yeah. Yeah. And then if you're like Andre Sukumtha, right, he's got his wife, Jamie, who's his manager, who's like all in supportive. And it's the opposite where she's he, he, some of his success is attributed, attributed right back to her. So it, could, cool. go both, it cool. could go both ways. Yeah. Right. Or you'd be so. like, John, you got, you got married. You're, you had a perfect man. Yeah. Like, you got I got man. good support. <laughs> yeah. That's cool, man. I, I, we always tell Co. I always tell Co. Man, I took all the advice your parents told you: get an engineering yeah. degree, get a stable <laughs> job, right? Buy a house, marry a nice Lao girl, and have some yeah, kids. Yeah, yeah, marry a nice Lao girl. <laughs> well, cool. Well, that's awesome, Walter. Man, we're glad to have you on. Um, Co. Anything else? Uh, you want Walter, to say to Walter, Walter, I got one one last question. Yeah. And like, I'm old school. I'm old school in bodybuilding, right? I think yeah. I'm old school when it comes to sports. Yeah. What What are your thoughts? about the Paul brothers and, and what they've done for boxing. You know, do you think it's a joke? Do you think it ruins the authenticity? Do you think they're, they're helping? What are your, they are bringing, about? they are bringing more non viewers of boxing to view, watch boxing mm -hmm. because of their rating and their popularity. They're bringing non, non uh, people that are not non viewers of boxing to boxing, which is good. Yeah. 
But yeah. they, I mean, if they fight a real boxer of competitive uh, nature, a real boxer, top ten contender, I they believe they'll lose. Yeah. And but with the training that they're receiving, they're paying, they have the money to to provide the best training. Who knows? Anything can happen. But you know, there's they're bringing notoriety to the sport, but they're also putting a lot of shame to the other boxers that are trying to make it to real boxers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the reason why I thought about that was I was watching W now I'm a huge WWF WWE fan yeah. and I was watching, it was just the Saturday, too. right. The, uh, uh, the, 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 was it Jake or Logan was fighting like Roman Reigns for the undisputed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, how did this guy in his third match and he's got like a title shot now to me that's and and yes they're bringing in new viewers right but that's like disrespecting all the guys that worked 20 years yeah, behind yeah, the scenes yeah. and never got the title shot yeah you know it's, i mean uh, so yeah you got the money and, and the money and the viewers man and, and, and you bought, they, they want to sell the, the yeah. every promotion wants to sell yeah yeah but yeah, I, I like your answer. I mean, that's, that's that's I like I like that answer. You know? Yeah, it does. It does. It does bring a lot of man. There. What about the guys that are just working their butt off and never get that shot? And he, yeah. and you come along, and you know that's tough. That's tough. I mean, but but the world is social media now. You know, it's it's, it's all about yeah not how great you are. It's it's how many followers you got. Yeah, how um, many times have changed? Yeah. Yeah. Like I noticed that in the bodybuilding world, like the quality has gone down. The quantity has gone yeah. up. Right? There's more, more and more competitors, right? Yeah. But the quality, man, the quality isn't like yeah. what it used to be. Yeah. That's just when I'm an old school guy and I'm hating. I'm hating, man. I should <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm in school too, man. But times awesome. have changed. We That's it. Yeah, and yeah, you gotta adapt, right? Or you get yeah. left behind. You know, so well, cool. Well, hey. Thanks, everybody, for listening to another episode you, of the Seed Work Podcast. Yeah, follow Walter on social media. Walter, for coming on the show. Stay safe in that hurricane, and we'll see you in Laos and Cambodia in May, man. Yeah, yeah man. Good luck. Good luck on your training. All the Thank best you. to you. Thank you, I. All right, man. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. The C4 Podcast is brought to you by the Lao American Sports Hall of Fame. Visit us on the web at laoamericansports.com, celebrating the first, inspiring the next.